Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the second in our series of IoT Security Raspberry Pi emulation videos. In this second foundational video we'll be installing the software. OK, so on our Windows 10 system we've downloaded the software and now we're going to progress to installing it. So if I go to the Downloads folder In this folder I have all of the software that we downloaded except for the Kali Linux and Metasploitable OVA files which I've moved somewhere else and also the Cisco IoT Security PL app file. Those we'll actually look at in later videos. We need to have Oracle VirtualBox installed for the Kali Linux and Metasploitable OVAs and the PL app image file will be used when we install Kumu. But all of the other software we can install right now. We'll start with Oracle VirtualBox. Simply a case of finding the downloaded installer, double clicking on the file. You may get the Windows User Authentication Access Control window pop up, which you may need to click yes to, you may not. The next thing to do is to click next. You can accept the defaults for the custom setup. Uh, you can accept all of the defaults or if you wish to, if you don't want to have a shortcut on your desktop, you can just unselect the shortcut. I don't like too many shortcuts on my desktop, but the choice is yours. And then click next. And then we'll proceed with the install, yes. And then click install. There we go, here is your user access, user account control which will pop up. This is Windows just double checking that you really do want to install this software. So we'll say yes. And Oracle VirtualBox has been installed. It doesn't take a particularly long time to install on a reasonably fast computer. The computer I'm actually using is a seven year old laptop, but it's a very powerful seven year old laptop and you can see I'm actually doing this in real time so you get some idea of how long it takes to install. Okay, so there's Oracle VirtualBox installed. I can start Oracle VirtualBox after the installation if I leave the tick box. And we should see that Oracle VirtualBox is now installed and running. It's currently version 6.114. Now we have Oracle VirtualBox installed, we can install the VirtualBox extension pack. Simply double click on the extension pack. And I've already done this once, so you will actually have install. I've just got reinstall. But the process will be identical. Agree to the license. say yes to the user account control and it will install the extension pack. Very simple straightforward installation. And This will give you things like USB 2 adapter and USB 3 adapter pass through. Okay. The next thing we'll install will be the PL app launcher. Yes to the user account control accept the agreement, next, next. You can optionally create a desktop shortcut but I won't do that and install. And of course this is what Cisco have produced in order to flash the Chestnut operating system onto the SD cards on real Raspberry Pis. We won't need to use that functionality but we might use the functionality of trying to find uh, available devices though there are other ways of doing that as well. For instance using Nmap Now comes the really critical piece of software, which is Kumu. We'll go to Kumu Windows 64 setup, double click on the app. You may well get a Windows Protected Your PC warning pop up saying Microsoft's Defender smart screen has prevented an unrecognized app from starting. Click on more info, 
and then run anyway. Coom is actually quite a well-recognized piece of software. Previous versions didn't even trigger that. It's just Windows basically catching up with the latest version. Just make sure that you download Kumu from the original website, the manufacturer's website, so to speak. Yes to the user account control. And then it's a case of select your language, English in our case, OK, next. I agree to the licensing. Uh, you could leave all of the defaults selected for this install. And then click the install button. This does take slightly longer to install than some of the other packages. But it's an incredibly clever piece of software and it really is the core component for making this project function correctly. It will allow us to run an operating system that is designed for an ARM processor, in other words a Raspberry Pi operating system, in this case the Chestnut version of Raspbian that Cisco have developed for the IoT security courses on a computer that actually has either an AMD or an Intel x86 or AMD64 based processor. So this is actually quite quite a clever piece of software. Okay, it looks like it's not actually doing anything, but then all of a sudden it will pick up speed and you'll notice that it is actually uh, installing an awful lot quicker. Here we go. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause that for a moment. Okay, that only took about a minute and a half or so to install. Completing Kumu setup, and we click finish. The Kumu kernel, or should I say the kernel Kumu 4434 Jesse, we don't install that. Um, that is actually a dependency which is used when we set up the batch file to run Kumu. So we don't need to worry about inst actually installing that, we'll use that later on. So we'll move on to OSF mount double click on OSF mount yes to the user account control I accept the agreement next 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 again create a desktop shortcut if you wish to next and install most of this software is literally a case of accepting the defaults I won't bother viewing the readme file for the minute but I'll, I'll launch OSF mount just to show you what, what it looks like Okay, so this will actually allow us to mount image files and we're going to use it to mount the chestnut image file and make some modifications in there in order to make things run properly. It's actually digital forensic software, very useful. As I said, most of this software can be installed with the default settings except for the next one. The next piece of software we're going to install is OpenVPN. We'll say yes to the user account control and we have to be very careful with this so next accept the agreement now when we're choosing components we need to deselect the open VPN service the open VPN GUI expand the advanced tree and deselect all of the options under the advanced tree. So basically all we want to have selected is one option and that is tap virtual ethernet adapters. Tick that one, deselect all of the rest. So this is a very powerful piece of software and we don't need the functionality of all the other components all we need to be able to do is install and upgrade TAP virtual device drivers. This will allow us to create virtual network cards on our system. So provided you've only got TAP virtual Ethernet adapter selected, you can now click Next. And then Install. OK, we can see that that says it's completed. So we're good to go. Next, 
I won't bother looking at the readme for the moment and finish. Okay, so that's all of the critical software installed. That's the really fundamental software that's required to make this work. Now we'll install just a few optional pieces of software to make life easier for ourselves. The first of those will be WinSCP. I'm going to install this for all users. It's your choice how you do it. User access control, yes. Accept the license. Typical install. I like the commander interface where you have um, the two panes, the local machine and the remote machine, and you can drag and drop between the two panes. Uh, but you can use the explorer type interface as well. And install. Such a useful piece of software. This will allow us to send files to and from our Raspberry Pis, and also the Kali Linux machine for that matter, via SSH. What I'll do is I'll actually launch WinSCP so as you can see what it looks like. Okay, so we log into a remote system using the secure file transfer protocol over port 22. TCP port 22 is SSH, of course, with our host name and a username, which is on the uh, remote system. And then we have the local system on the left hand side, the remote system on the right hand side, and we can just move files backwards and forwards between them. Incredibly useful piece of software. Putty. Putty we don't install. Putty is an executable file and we can run it directly from the executable file. In fact, once we've run it once, we should, theoretically speaking, be able to hit the Windows key R. Um, sorry, not the Windows key R. Just hit the Windows key and type Putty. And it should run it again. So it will go off and find it. And then finally, Nmap version 7.80 currently. User account control, yes. I agree to the license. Um, now I'm actually going to put everything on here. I'm not going to deselect anything at all. And install. This will allow us to do many, many things. It will also allow us to go off and find our Raspberry Pis. We can actually do ping sweeps, port scans, it's just a very useful piece of software. During the installation you will find that you almost certainly need to install what's called the NP Cap driver. This is the uh, packet capture or sniffing driver. It allows your network card to run in promiscuous mode um, or monitor mode if it's a wireless card which allows you to capture all the packets that go past the network card instead of just the ones that are either directed to it or multicast or broadcast traffic. I agree to the NP Cap driver install the NPCAP driver and then it will continue with the Nmap installation once the NPCAP driver is installed. Okay, Now I'm doing this as best as I can in real time. I only needed to pause it a little bit for the Kumu installation because the Kumu installation run for about a minute and a half. So you can see how long it takes to install all of this software. I'm always trying to do these things in real time if at all possible so as you can see how long they take. That's completed. Next and finish. Okay, so NPCAP was installed. It's just finishing off the Nmap installation now. The Nmap is now completed. Next. Uh, I'm not going to put a desktop icon on. And finish. That's quite a lot of software we've installed. Um, other than Cisco derived software from the Cisco curriculum, it's all open source software. And we are now ready for the fun part where we can start building uh, virtual networks, emulated Raspberry Pis, and installing Kali Linux, which will be the next video. Thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you for the next video.